Do you know that up to 20% of the population, or possibly even more, in Egypt have hep C or have been diagnosed with hep C? Not that they actually have the actual physical effects of it. And you ask yourself, why is that? Is it promiscuity? No, it's not. Definitely not. Is it some ancient curse from the pharaohs? Hmm. No, that's, that's some pause for thought. But no, it's not. It's not an ancient curse from the pharaohs or anything like that. It's not, uh, you know, nobody didn't open. It wasn't because somebody opened up King Tut's tomb and uh, the, the population got cursed. But actually, it's uh, it's actually a very simple thing. Um, it's not from uh, sex or anything or promiscuity. It's actually from needles. And uh, this is actually old information, but the problem is still there. The problem's still acute. The problem's still worse, you know. And this goes to show you about, you know, exercising extreme caution with proper medical procedures, as the wise cat would let you know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about 20%, possibly more now. Actually, going back to 2000, there was a, a New York Times article and, uh, you know, the problem is still present throughout the entire population. They had a campaign that went on for about 30 years uh, to fight a parasitic illness. And they had this campaign conducted all across Egypt. So what they did was they were giving needles and were injections of a particular substance. They were given up to 12 to 16 injections of different things to fight this parasitic illness that was prevalent in Egypt, but the needles were not sterilized. Oh, God, would you believe that? Would you believe that? You know, and now the problem today in Egypt is actually quite severe. Um, but did you also know that in the case of, of Hep C, 20%, uh, about 20% or maybe a little bit more of 20% of the population will actually throw off Hep C? Uh, as you know, not, not the population, but of the people who actually get it. Now, of the population in Egypt that have been, you know, tested to have Hep C, but not necessarily the symptoms of Hep C, um, they they showed it's about 20% of the population, and this is from uh, needles from, administered by medical people. Believe it or not, it's amazing. It's amazing. You think they got it all figured out? No. You know, this is one of the reasons I personally don't trust vaccines because I don't think they have it all figured out. Besides, you know, the other thing is that they, they come from aborted fetuses in many cases. My God. You know, not that I'm an extremely moral person, but, you know, I kind of draw the line some places. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, the hep C is actually a virus that makes the liver swell and malfunction. And it could lead to liver cancer. So it's a pretty damn severe disease. You know that? And, you know, with the liver is very important for detoxifying the body but you know I you know that but the other thing is though and I have to reemphasize this that hep C actually has been known to uh, well actually 20% of the people infected with hep C uh, have been known to just throw it off and naturally that's why you know sometimes you see on the internet you know they say yeah I cured my hep C with this I cured my hep C with that you don't know if they just cured it <laughs> by their body because what scientists have been finding out, not to say that I, you know, I'm an advocate to try and, you know, try anything you possibly can, you know, if it works, it works, you know, I can argue with that, but and I'm not a, I'm not a pro pharma guy here at all, but, uh, you know, I know it's got limits. It's, there's a, there's a time and place for everything, you know, but the thing is, uh, you know, with hep C, you know, it, it's they found that it's actually something in their body that, you know, there's something different in immune, immunology and the actual DNA and the genes in their body that it's actually caused people to recover. Not necessarily, you know, taking this or that or this, you know. Now, you know, if I was diagnosed with hep C, I'd probably take loads of vitamin C because I think vitamin C is just a damn good thing to do anyway, period. You know, uh, what, you know. I'm a big advocate of it. I'm totally sold on it. I realize that it's got to be a lot of it, you know. Uh, but, you know, probably something like milk, milk thistle, too. Because milk thistle has been known to help detoxify the liver, right? But, you know, I guess all those things got limits. Those All those things got limits. But, you know, sometimes when people are, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking about these things, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing that you got a country out there that actually 20% of the population actually has hep C. And, you know, not necessarily that 
that 20% has real medical problems because it, but they've actually been diagnosed with Hep C, and they got it from the medical establishment with the needles. Believe it or not, God, man, talk about the hidden hand of evil. <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand how that could possibly happen. You know, I thought all needles had to be sterilized. You know, 101, going back to uh, you know medical 101. You know, I don't give a damn how far back you go. I mean, uh, even a hundred years, you knew people probably knew that. Uh, you know, and this program was actually started back in the 1950s. So, hmm. so it's not some ancient freaking curse from uh, King Tut, but it goes to show you. And it also, it also, I just want to reiterate something else here. Not actually reiterate, but it's actually say it for the first time. You know, what a lot of times people pick up a lot of illnesses from hospitals. Yeah, yeah, because there's so much stuffed in hospitals, it kind of like incubates in all these different areas. Even though they try to, uh, you know. Uh, sterilize everything and they try to be really clean and they try to there's so much stuff in hospitals constantly floating in and out of there that a lot of times people pick up a lot of crazy infections that are not treatable with any kind of antibiotics so you know I don't know it's uh, it's kind of crazy in a way you know you, you worry about things and people worry about you know this and that and all this kind of stuff and then you know here it is the ones that are supposed to be providing medical care <laughs> were the ones that actually spread the hep C in Egypt. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. And, you know, this is an article, actually, you know, I'm not going to display the article, but I just read it. It's kind of just telling you, it's, you know, if you probably could research it, it's probably, uh, it goes all the way back to uh, 2000, New York Times. But the problem is still present in Egypt to this day. And they were aware that 20% of the population in Egypt had, were infected with hep C in the year 2000 and it was from a 30-year program that they used they were using that they had in place to wipe out um, different types of infections that they were being injected with 12 to 16 uh, antibiotics against which was some type of some type of I don't know what the hell it was they were trying they were going against they were going against some kind of epidemic and they actually created another epidemic that was much worse. Yeah, you know, this is almost like the medical profession all over. You know, sometimes you even wonder what's going on with those uh, flu viruses and all this. You know, the flu vaccinations and whatever the hell else is out there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, maybe the needles will be sterilized. But then again, what's in the freaking concoction? You don't know what's in that damn thing, right? So it's not a curse from King Tut's tomb. Uh, it was actually a curse from incompetent medical people. And it's amazing that, you know, <laughs> I got to watch what I say on here because I only got to give you research or maybe the things I give you, I give you is stuff I'm doing personally, but I can't give out any kind of medical advice. But then I'm realizing that the professionals are a bunch of screw ups themselves. You believe it or not, <laughs> it's amazing, you know. So, yeah, they were trying to wipe out a bloodborne virus. Da -da 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 -da. And uh, they were given 12 to 16 injections of a tartar emetic. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. But basically, since the needles were not sterilized, hep C became prevalent in Egypt in 2000. It had 20% 20, 20 of the people had it. And to this day, it's probably a little more than that. So, what do you do about it? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, really. Now, I know, I, I personally think there's actually cures for a lot of this stuff out there big time. And, you know, I only say, I don't ever call nothing a cure. Even though there's a lot of people out there that call stuff cures on the internet. I got a cure for this. And I guess it makes a bigger headline. But, yeah, I got a suspicion it's going to work. As that, I got a suspicion. But, you know, as there are other videos I did on things, you know, with the, uh, you know, the, the frequencies, the, uh, you know, the the quantum entanglement, spooky frequencies, and, you know, the vitamin C, mag, mega vitamin C, I don't know. Maybe maybe it would be very effective. Actually, if somebody had hep C, probably one of the better things to take would be lots of milk thistle. Milk thistle. Because actually, that's been known for, uh, they've, known, they, they've actually done that over in Scandinavia and also in uh, European countries against, uh, you know, like toxification of livers of the liver from alcoholism. Or even they even give it to people for like for the, in a poison control centers and stuff like that. Milk thistle. Yeah, you know maybe it's not going to be the cure all, but it's still not a bad thing to take. It's cheap and it don't cost much money. 
and I don't sell it or nothing like that. And I think I got a bunch of that stuff on hand too, even, but I don't know. I got like 300 different supplements on hand over here, but I forget which ones I got. Sometimes I got to find them. <laughs> There's so many of them. I don't take all of them, man. I think the ones I usually take every day is vitamin C, the uh, uh, vitamin E, vitamin D3, salt palmetto, astragalus root, natural alfalfa, er, uh, pine ryegrass is olive leaf extract, and also nature's way, whole food energizer, and also the essential oils, coconut oil, flax oil, flick, fish oil, borage oil, I don't know, selenium. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Oh, and NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Yeah, man. So, but anyway. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to say ironclad and I have every answer for everything out there. I don't. I don't. I got a suspicion, though, and I got a suspicion that I'm on the right track. So... The research will continue. <laughs> Only the cat knows, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, you know. sometimes I guess, you know, sometimes people are worried about, you know, the bubonic plague from their partners and all this kind of stuff like that. Well, <laughs> you pretty much get it from the medical profession. My God. The ones that are in charge of our health, right? Supposedly. The experts. My God. So sometimes maybe it does pay to listen to a layman like myself because I'm not promising anything, but... It's amazing how much uh, the population in Egypt got affected f with Hep C from actually the medical establishment. It's freaking amazing. It's amazing. You know, I, I was I was unaware of this till not that long ago, and I said it was an old article, but it continues to this today. You know, 15 years ago there was 20 percent of the population in Egypt that's affected with Hep C. That's a slightly higher now. It's not because they're promiscuous. It's not because they're doing you know, drugs or anything like that. No, it's from the needles from the medical profession themselves. My God. My God. I don't know. And my, and me, personally, my philosophy is I'm avoiding vaccines, man, because even if the needles are sterilized, I don't know what the hell's in those damn vaccines, man. I don't think they got their stuff together. You know, maybe I don't have all my stuff together either, but I personally trust uh, my own instincts and going with the ancients, the ancient cultures. You know, I bet you back in the way, way, way back in the real ancient Egyptians, maybe they did have cures for hep C. Hmm. Right? Maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe you need to have a pyramid power or something. I don't know. Maybe you need to have the healing hands put upon your head and you'll be fine again. I don't know. But, you know, I think there is stuff out there. And, you know, a lot of people are not searching for the answers because they want to be spoon-fed the answers and, you know, I'm not going to blatantly come out and say I have a cure for something. But I got a strong suspicion about a lot of different things. And I do take a lot of hits for telling people what snake oil in the alternatives, quote, unquote, medical field. You know, when people say this cures that and that cures that. I tell them there's a lot of limits on it. And I do take a lot of hits on it. So I do not go too far one way or the other in anything I do say. So, uh. I do have a suspicion that hep C is curable, but uh, I don't want to freaking say nothing about that too much on this video. Just to warn you that, um, you know, sometimes some of the worst diseases are coming from screw-ups in the medical world. And Egypt's a good example of that, right? 